so you know, we had a ceremony celebrating the life of Fido this morning at 9, 10 a.m. Goodbye, sweet Fido. <laughs> I tried to restart it, I tried to fire it up, and actually caused a small fire that I didn't get on camera. So it didn't work. I'm not sure if the rice got inside, but definitely the gimbal wasn't working, but it actually started. It just also started a fire. So Fido's officially dead, sadly. Um, and I guess I'll get a new Fido as soon as I can. Right now we're leaving our vacation on the beach and we're heading back to Saratani today. I'm going right now to drive the scooter back to the rental place and then we're heading towards the ferry. Made it to the scooter shop. Hello, how are you? Do you know how to give five? High five? <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Scooters dropped off and we're on our way to the ferry terminal now. I don't know the name of this ferry terminal, but it's different than the one we came on. And I'm actually looking forward to the ferry ride. There's just something, I say all the time that my favorite mode of transportation is the train. My second favorite mode of transportation is definitely taking boats. I love being on the sea and I'm actually really looking forward to the journey back to the mainland. This is actually really cool down here. This is one of the places we didn't go on our scooter trip yesterday, but there's the pier here, obviously, and then you have the Big Buddha, which is just out on this tiny little island way off in the distance, and you got all these really cool fishing boats here. Again, I talked about this a bunch. I'm on vacation right now, so I'm not taking pictures, but that doesn't mean I don't see the world in pictures. It's one of the things about being a photographer. Everywhere you look, you almost don't see the world. You see the photos that you can make within it, and that's a cool thing. It can also be a little bit annoying when you're not taking pictures, but this would be a really cool place to take pictures, so hopefully at some point again in my life, I can come back to this island and get some photos here. There's all like these giant fishing boats everywhere and then you've actually got these kids in the water that are super cute playing with like a miniature version of the fishing boat. It's kind of funny. It kind of reminds me of when we were kids and you know our parents would all drive cars and then we would play with toy cars. And it's almost exactly the same just with fishing boats instead. Pretty cool. Looks like the ferry's on time, so jump on board. And from this pier, it's like a two hour ferry journey back. Let's go. Jody, what do you got in your right hand? <laughs> on you, friend. back on the mainland on the bus to near the airport. This bus isn't as cool as the last one, but we have the front seat again, which is always awesome. We got to our hotel, which is, uh, it's on the river, literally on the river. I wanted to book a place that was really close to the airport since we have an early morning flight tomorrow. And this was like the place I found on booking.com. And it's hilariously amazing. I'm gonna walk you over to the other side because it's literally floating right on the river. And there's like wooden steps to get across. 
and then the room's like a box right on the river here. Kind of awesome. We have um, just the night here, and since the trip getting here was way longer than we expected, I'm gonna not call this an episode, but carry it on to tomorrow. There was a lot of questions on my photography workflow video, a ton of questions. So I thought when I get back to Chiang Mai tomorrow, I'd answer them, or I'd answer as many as I can Q&A style. Actually really looking forward to getting back to Chiang Mai, back to the routine, back to the temples. It's been a fun vacation though. Home sweet home in Chiang Mai. What's up guys, I am back from Koh Samui here in the office in Chiang Mai. Here in my little man cave office. I'm here working, Jody's over there working. Don't let her distract you. Don't let her beauty distract you. This is all about me. Let's start. A photographer in Thailand asks, I have one question. Do you calibrate your laptop? No, I don't calibrate my laptop. My laptop is in so many different environments, coffee shops, apartments, outdoors. I, I'm everywhere and I'm editing in different places all the time and I try to edit in as many controlled environments as possible, but it's not always possible. So I don't calibrate my laptop, but I do know how my laptop behaves. So I do know that my laptop's a little bit brighter than most laptops, I know that it's a little bit punchier and a little bit more colorful than a usual laptop. So I take those things into mind when I edit. I also really rely on my histogram to look at things like white balance and exposure. So, so calibration isn't something I can do, but if I had like an office and I was always editing in the same place, I would definitely calibrate. So I guess the short answer is no, I don't calibrate my laptop. And yes, I would if I edited always in the same place in a controlled environment. Dan Stan says, what about handling copyright on buildings or people that happen to be in your shot? Basically, if there's people or buildings that I don't have a release on, I can't sell them for commercial, but I can sell, sell them for editorial. So basically, if there's people or buildings that are copyright protected in my photos, I won't sell them commercially. I'll send them over to editorial to be sold in some capacity. And actually, if you sell with like micro stock or rights managed stocks, there's always an option to have it sell only editorial rather than editorial and commercial. So that's generally what I do. Um, if I'm out shooting with a friend or with Jody or myself, I'll always sign a release myself. So a lot of times the models that are in my photos are people that I can get to release them. And on the odd occasion, if I'm out shooting and there's this person that's absolutely perfect for a commercial image, I might ask them to sign a model release as well. And I actually have an app on my phone called Easy Release, and I can get them to sign a model release right there on my phone. And that's how I kind of cover that. Fernando de Aroca asks, what was your experience when you started photography? It was eight years ago, but can you talk about that? And maybe that's a video for another day, but my experience with photography when I started was that it's something that takes a lot of practice. And I'm lucky in that I've been living this life for eight years, so I shoot almost every single day. And because I shoot almost every single day, I'm really, really well practiced. And I think that that's a lot of what photography is. It's just shooting as often as you can. My experience from a business side of things from um, the early goings is quite tough. I understand how hard it is to find people to buy your images and find your, buy your work. It took me like three or four years of really, really hard work to find consistent clients. So it's not an easy task. It's not something that's, 
You know, you can just rock up, buy a camera and go out and shoot and expect to make money from it. You need to learn. Just like you need to go to university for three or four years before you can do another career, I think with photography you need to shoot for three or four years before you can start trying to earn money from it as well. I think that that's just the case. And I kind of give this analogy a lot. If you were a welder, you couldn't just go to a store, buy a welding machine and then go around saying, hey guys, I'm here to weld things. You have to learn how to weld. You have to learn how to do the technical side of things before you can sell your work. So getting into photography as a business is hard. Finding the clients is a challenge and it's a struggle, but it's worth it. And I think that with so much information out there on how to do it now, it's easier than when I started. But that being said, yeah, I guess um, that, that was my experience. It's tough business to get into, but once you get into it, it's so, so worth it because it's just brilliant. Finks2006 asks, how do I manage exclusive rights versus non-exclusive rights? How do I manage the price? Do I double the price? How do I do it? There's no like specific answer to that because every image is totally different and every usage is totally different. Is that exclusivity with a client for a year or two years or for life? That's really gonna change the value of the image. As is, where is that image gonna be used? Is it a billboard? Is it a magazine spread? Is it a commercial? So the way I deal with that is actually by using the Getty Image Calculator. If you go to Google and Google the Getty Image Calculator or Getty Image Price Calculator, you'll find their tool. And I don't endorse Getty Images. I think they way undervalue photographers and I wouldn't submit my images to Getty Images if I were you guys. But their tool is amazing. The tool kind of has like a workflow where you pick and choose all these different options about how that image is going to be used and then it spits out a price. And that's a pretty good starting point on where your image is valued. And I think that they overvalue images a little bit on that calculator, but it is still a really good marking point. And anytime I have questions about how much my image is worth, how much I should be selling it for, I go there. Christoph777 asked if I would do a video on my travel photography editing and editing workflow. And I think maybe at some point I'll do something like that, but I just find that it's a little bit boring because I'm not like a huge editor. I don't do anything fancy when I edit. I literally just bring my images into Lightroom. I edit them super quickly and then I export them. <laughs> it's like there's nothing super fancy the outside of what I explained in my workflow. But that being said, I think that at the end of some videos in the future, I might take you into the editing suite and just show you what I'm doing to one or two images specifically. Especially if I do something special like a pano or an image blend or maybe black and white or just something a little bit special and something a little bit different, I might take you into the editing suite at the end of vlogs. This is a question that came up a lot and Gadget John asked it first. When I send the images to my clients, how do I send them? Do I send them high res? Do I send them low res? How do I do it? Very simple. And it's the industry standard to either set up a Dropbox or a OneDrive folder and to put all the images that you want to sell into that folder and then having it set up so that the client can view the images and view everything but can't actually download them and then the client will come back to you and say I want this image, this image, this image you'll delete all the other images from the folder and then you'll change the folder sharing settings so that the client can then download the images so that's the best way to work around it share it with the client but make sure that the client can't download the images now that being said no client in their right mind is ever going to download an image and use it if they haven't paid for it it just costs them way too much in a legal battle for them to do that. In fact, in my eight years, I've never once, not once, have I ever had a copyright issue with a client. And I'm very liberal with giving my files to clients too. A question regarding the export. This is from Jean-Luc Coulon. And it's about what metadata I keep on the images. I keep all the metadata on the images. Everything stays on the image, copyright information, shutter speed, all that stuff, I keep it all on the, on the photo. I have no reason to hide any of that stuff. Good question by Othmar Fett. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. How do you keep track of which images sold to a retainer assignment client? I have an Excel spreadsheet. And basically every single month I just throw in all the images 
the JPEG images with the file names and everything. And then I have different rows. And if that image has been sold to a certain client, I just put an X. So it has all the client names on the top and it just has X next to them. So if I can sell them or not sell them, or if it was like maybe a one year exclusivity, I'll put the date in that space. And it's just a giant workflow that I go through. Mohammed Tavakoli, Mohammed Tavakoli asks, do you wait to hear back from an assignment client before you submit to your stock agent? Wouldn't that take months? Yes, absolutely, because they have first rights. And even if it takes months, I still have to wait because they have the first pick at them. It usually doesn't take months though. It usually takes a couple weeks at the longest, maybe a month at the longest. But yeah, that's part about being a photographer and managing your files is you have to give the people that paid for the images up front the first shot at it. So um, yeah, absolutely. I wait until they come back with me before I send them to stock agencies, 100%. Dylan Holm asks what currency I charge clients since I have clients from all over and the answer is whatever currency I feel like that day. I usually stick to US dollars and I stick to euros and maybe pounds but I honestly whatever the client feels most comfortable paying in that's what I work in. You kind of just have to get used to working with multiple um, currencies and then that client will pay either by bank transfer or PayPal and then it gets converted to Canadian dollars back at my bank. Anyways guys, that is it. Those are the questions. I'm back in Chiang Mai as I mentioned. There's a couple temples around that I'm going to go shoot. One's a bit of a scooter drive out into the countryside. That's coming up fairly soon. We're also going on a little bit of a trip to a town called Pai which is a village near here or a small town near here. And then I might be making a scooter trip all the way to Chiang Rai as well. So lots of fun stuff still coming from here in Thailand and maybe I'll get some of those photo editing tips into those videos as we go along as well. So I guess that's it for me today. I'll see you guys on tomorrow's episode back here in Chiang Mai. Peace.